Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Rafael, and thank you so much for showing up for the webinar. So um, basically, for today's webinar, um, the topic would be introduction to the basics of business consulting. So I have with me our senior business consultant and project manager, uh, uh, Sylvia. Um, Sylvia, if you'd like to introduce yourself to the audience. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So this is Sylvia Rosario. I'm working at Lightcastle as a senior business consultant and a project manager. So today I'll be hosting this session. So I'm envisioning the session in a way that I'll be talking about 30 minutes, more, more or less than 30 minutes, and then we'll be going into our Q&A session because I have gone through all the questions that you have sent to us through the form that you were asked to, form, asked to fill up. And we tried to design the session maintaining that, that structure. But in case we miss anything, feel free to wait till the end of the session and maybe we can discuss the questions together. So, uh, okay. so I'm starting to share my screen and to save my bandwidth, I'm going to turn off my video. So, all right. So today's session, the heading is goes by basics of business consulting. So first of all, I would love to give an introduction of myself or how did I find my way to Light Castle? All right. Uh, you are not supposed to do anything, all right? That's all right. So, okay. So back in 2017, I was a final year student at University of Dhaka. And then I first got to know about LCP and then I got to know about consulting. So that was an interesting backstory. So I was participating in one of the very famous case study, case study, case competition in Bangladesh. And there I met one of my now boss and mentor, and he was talking about financial modeling and how to not only just financial modeling, he was talking about cost benefit analysis and how, how to give voice to the data and how to listen to data. And at that time, that idea seemed very unusual to me. And I, I felt like, okay, so you can think like this. So where this person works, what's the company that the person works for or what did you do? And then I come across the LCP website, and then I got, a, got to know about management consultancy. And then I kept looking at their pages, both on LinkedIn and Facebook. And in November 2017, somehow I joined as a training consultant at, at LCP. And then within one year, I became a business analyst. So not one year, like within four months, I became a business analyst. And then I kept working here, and I became venture I became a business consultant in 2019. And then last year, I was promoted to the position of the senior business consultant and project manager. So this is my curve of my, my career curve that I have drawn. And then we sometimes compare our life to, you know, the iceberg, the tip of the iceberg. So this is the tip of the iceberg. So now let's look at what is underneath the iceberg. So these are my learnings. So I learned to make financial models in my first year. I wrote my very first full report in 2018. And then in 2019, I started to design and implement my own research projects. I did my first finding dissemination presentation in front of a client. Then by the end of 2019, I finally started to claim myself as someone with advanced level of Excel proficiency. By 2020, when I became a project manager, I started to manage my own projects. And then I hope that I learned how to negotiate without getting emotional with clients, internal stakeholders and external stakeholders. So that was my journey. I hope I could answer your questions. Like some of, the, some of you had questions about how to, what does a consultant do and what are their roles and how do you get yourself into a consultancy job and how do you kind of accelerate your way up? So I think that answered some kind of, you know, very, that, that, I think that's a good overview to start. And then to, I tried to put today's this, today's webinar or today's uh, whatever you call it in four simple uh, broad structures. So number one, we'll be talking about the introduction to strategy consulting. We'll talk about what is actually strategy consulting or what does a consultant actually do? 
And then we'll talk about what does it take to be a consultant? We will we will address some of the myths that's going on here and on to some time, and then we will actually talk about the facts. We will talk about the pains and gains of consultancy, and then we will definitely talk about how to be a consultant. And lastly, I will try to put some of the good resources that has helped me over the years to become a consultant. So, the role of a consultant is to improve the client's condition. So this is not something that has been said by me. So the author of the book, The Consulting Bible, Alan Weiss, he said that. So let's now try to understand what is the role? How do we improve the client's condition? So first of all, we have three tasks. Number one is to identify the client's problem. So before I go into uh, details like who is the client, what do you mean by the client, or the term client. So in consultancy, we usually, our core business is, or our core value proposition is so giving, providing our solution to someone who needs it, to someone that not only just needs it, who, who will be, who will be acquiring that service from us in return of something. And that is our client. So we need to identify the client's problem. And second, all right, I can see a hand, but I really appreciate it. If uh, you must, you can probably fill the question for the next 30 minutes and we can probably address all the question on a go. Thank you. So number one is identifying the client's problem. And number two is provide evidence-based solution because from problems definitely comes the solution. And number three would be to improve the process in a scalable and successive and sustainable manner. So these are the broad level tasks. So what are the subjects that we need? So the subjects are in order to identify the client's problem, we need to, we need to conduct secondary and primary research to get the macroeconomic data, consumer data, competitor data, regulator data, or any other type of data that might help us to identify where the problem is. Sometimes we make this mistake or other, uh, sometimes we make the mistakes of considering symptoms of a problem as problem. So therefore in consultancy, identifying a problem as a problem is the most important task. And then we have to analyze the data to identify the client's existing and future problem. And then we will be doing some analysis. And at this point, this the name of the analytical modules or the name of the uh, tools might sound very uh, unfamiliar with you to you. I'm not, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna just use them or probably I can explain them later. So we use various tools like cost benefit analysis. We use valuation, financial modeling. We do policy analysis and a number of other analysis. And then we translate the findings in a language that the client understands. And thirdly, we communicate effectively. By communicating effectively, we mean that we try to send the message or transmit the message in a way that has the reach and recall effect. Whenever we're trying to communicate with any internal or external stakeholder, we try to do it in a way that the client or the internal or external stakeholder understand the message on the go. And also we use this uh, interesting strategy, which is called the three-way or three-point strategy. As you can see in most of my slides, I'm using three points and then I am explaining it later. So these are some of the very popular uh, business writing strategy or business communication strategy, and that can be found on any any website or any you know, any you know any self help books. And then lastly, we talk about improve process in a scalable and sustainable manner. So we recommend strategies to implement solution. We do not only identify the problem or do not only provide the solution. We also tell the client or internal stakeholder, by internal stakeholder, I'm meaning my company, my consultancy firm. So we recommend strategies in a way that can be implemented to feasible solutions. And also we introduce a timeline and, and we also identify the agents for implementation. So this was a little bit about what does a consultant do or what is expected of a consultant or the role of a consultant. So I think that 
I have blabbered for a while. And maybe we can take a few questions at this point and maybe we can get back to the slide again. So I think Imas uh, Bhai had his hand up. Yeah, um, please kindly have your questions. Place your questions in the chat box or you can unmute and then uh, ask your question. Thank you. Um, I, I have one question. Um, thank you so much for organizing this, first of all, and it's a great presentation so far. Um, one question that I had, like, probably when we are looking at developed economies, we might get told of more and more accurate data. And what I was thinking is that when I like participated in some of the business case competitions, I was particularly like sort of facing a lot of challenges in finding data for um, developing economies. So basically there's like not like a great store of data available. For example, if I want to like analyze what my competitors are doing, how are they doing it? Like when I'm just simply Googling on the internet and I, I'm sure that's not probably the way. So I would like to know how does a consultant do that? Like what's the way to go forward with? Excellent question, Dr. So, this is a continuous challenge that we always face because we are operational in a developing economy and most of our clients are not from this part of the world. And it is very difficult to translate the finding, the local findings and present it to them. So the particular problem that you have mentioned, it is not, uh, it is, more particularly, this is a research problem. This is a lack of or absence of research data. So we usually try to design our questionnaire in a way so that we can talk to the proper industry experts because one of our core selling proposition or one of our unique value proposition is that, that we know we have this network presence in the industry where we know by we, I mean Light Castle Partners, we know most of the industry experts, like if we need anything in the impact industry, if we need any information related to the regulator in the impact industry or the investment industry, investment ecosystem or the startup ecosystem or any ecosystem, we can just leverage that network and we can get to the right people and we know who will give, lead us to the right data. And in Bangladesh, as you have mentioned in developing economies, especially in Bangladesh, it's very difficult to get the right data. So most of the time we leverage our network effect and then we try to get that data. And sometimes some government data are not publicly available. So you need to play around that a little bit. And as I'm going to talk about strategy a little bit more in my later slides. So you will know that uh, you have to think strategically and that's probably the answer of most of your, uh, that's probably the answer to most of your questions. So is that clear, Dr. Yes, and uh, thank you so much for that answer. A follow-up question, um, may I just ask, uh, would the, like, for example, if you have like a lot of foreign clients like working with you in like uh, so partners, wouldn't they sort of like have that sort of doubt or sort of um, credibility issues? Like, how do you tackle that when a client sort of says that we, we don't trust your data or something? Like, how do you back it up? like with the mm -hmm. network connections and how do you like demonstrate that? Mm -hmm. So uh, that is a good, good follow-up question. So whenever you are into consulting, you have to be the expert. You have to build that credibility. You have to build that thought leadership into the industry. That's whenever you, you're uh, presenting a data, you, you are citing it well. You are citing it like, so I got this data from the secretary of this ministry. And he told me that, and then I triangulated the data because most of the time, not most of the time, all of the time we triangulate our findings because sometimes the industry experts, like when we're talking, when we're talking to three or four industry experts, there can be some data discrepancy. And then you have to also triangulate the finding. So you have to build your credibility or you have to build, build your expertise in a way so that the data cannot be questioned. Perfect. Thank you so much for that. Okay. 
So do we have any other questions or should we move along? Um, I think uh, we can go ahead. Um, please, if you have your questions, do drop it to the chat box. Uh, we'll get to them at the later part of the session. Thank you so much. So what does it take to be a consultant? So as I mentioned, uh, that consulting is an art and science. There are no set rules like Dorpon just mentioned that. Uh, how do we do that? We cannot just tell you or we cannot just come up with one single answer. So this is the way and that's how we do it. Because this changes a lot and this changes client to client, case to case and project to project. So based on that and based on our whole understanding of this really complicated concept, which sounds very simple in ideal phase, which is consulting, can be pretty much misleading. And sometimes we miss the facts and we sometimes advocate for the myths. So there are some of the myths that surrounds the area of consulting. So number one, we often hear that, that you have to be a type A person, extremely competitive, extremely, you know, some other, uh, qualities in that area to be a consultant. You need to be, you need to have the perfect CGPA. You have to be really extroverted and spend a lot of time talking to a client. You have to work 80 plus hours a week. You need to organize your family into a team-based organization. Like you have to be that kind of uh, person that does not have any time for themselves or who live a very uptight and very competitive lifestyle. But if we look into the facts, we will see that consultancy is nothing but thinking strategically and acting upon it. So if in order to find a career in consultancy in Bangladesh or in anywhere else, there are some basic facts that might help you or there are some basic qualities that you might need. So number one is you need to achieve superior communication skill that is both in written form and in uh, verbal communication also. And then there's the Microsoft, Microsoft Excel should be your new best friend. So we have heard this. Uh, there are like many sites called Fishbowl Consulting, Consulting Humor and any other and many forums, consultant forums in North America that cater to the consultants. And there's a saying going on. And sometimes there I have seen so many memes about this that consultants and their Microsoft Excel. So I cannot stress the fact enough that you need to have a really good grasp over Microsoft Excel because this is the most basic yet most useful data analytics tool. And then we have to get into the practice of active listening. So all of us listen, but there are very few people who actually actively listen. So if you want to understand the problem of your internal audience and the external audience, you have to listen actively. Otherwise you won't understand it or you won't, able to, you, you won't be able to create or cater the perfect solution. And then we have to be creative. We have to be really, really creative. There's another myth, it's not written here, that consultants are not creative enough. They just follow the rules and they just follow the structure and they do stuff. No, we have to be really creative when we are trying to solve a problem. And then we need to master the ability to learn, unlearn and relearn very fast. This is really important because in consultancy, we do not only work our own company. We usually work with our clients and all of our clients have different problems. They cater to different audience and they have different business, different revenue model. So this is very important for us to learn very quickly about their business, about their problem, about their target audience, about their segmentation strategy. And this is very important for us to unlearn also because we cannot take that learning forward and use it on another client's project. Which, is, which might be totally different from the previous client's problem. Another issue is that consulting is an evolving, is an ever evolving industry. So all the learnings become obsolete in a really short amount of time. So in order to cater to that, in order to kind of, you know, proceed that you have to unlearn very quickly. And then you relearn the skills that are in, in the market very quickly. So, and lastly, second lastly, you start living like a consultant. 
as Dorbon has told me, has asked me that uh, how do you answer that or how do you go forward with that or how do you advocate your solution? So we live in strategy. Everything is structured, everything is based on strategy. So we have to get into that mindset that every breath I take, everything I do, it has to be, this has to be followed by really good thought of strategy and structure. And lastly, we have to have an open mind and also we have to practice empathy. This is not only true for consulting, I think this is true for almost all work environment if you really want to go with everyone around you. And then, all right, I would love to stop here and check whether anyone has any question in the room. Um, oh, sorry, I have another question about uh, in the facts section when I see how like a lot of the skills that are mentioned are like obviously relevant. Um, what about some sort of like math skills or sort of computational skills that one has to develop? Like For example, I'm in college right now and what sort of skills can I like develop over the four years so that I can be in a position to work my way up to uh, be a consultant? Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing that uh... I think you are talking from a North American perspective, right? <clears> oh, <throat> uh, yeah. All right. So in North America, so I have uh, wrote that you need the perfect CGPA as a part of a myth. But, uh, well, by perfect, I meant four out of four. But you actually need a pretty high CGPA to be in the consultancy industry. Because as we know that Consultancy is one of the most competitive out there. This is not a myth or this is not a, uh, I mean, this is a fact. And as we have seen through, seen in the case of North American companies and also Bangladeshi companies, that they want the people that they deem are, have the most uh, solid background in maths or strategy or critical thinking. So, and we also actively look for people who has background in economics, statistics, mathematics, physics maybe, to be a consultant. So you have answered, you have already answered your question that you need to have some kind of uh, educational background and also some kind of you know, expertise in some of the areas, because as I have also mentioned that you have to be a very good uh, strategy and structure person. So as we all know that people who are really good at math and really good at uh, economics, they usually have a really good ability to think critically. So this is a skill that is going to be valued all over the world. Did I, could I answer your question, Dr. Poon? Yeah, sure, thank you. All right, so I can see uh, Rahul Vishwas, uh, Vishwas hands. Yeah, can you hear me right now? Yes, perfect. All right, first of all, thank you for arranging this session. And so my question is based on the context of the myth and facts. So let me give a background of myself. So I finished my Tripoli, uh, graduation in Tripoli back in 2019. And then I started working in an agency, marketing agency, and I, I was there for 11 months. And in the, mid, I, uh, in the mid of last year, I found this excellent uh, certification course that is financial modeling and valuation analyst. And from there, actually, I started, uh, you know, uh, getting of interest in this sector. So my greatest question or the concern is that though my uh, educational background is from Tripoli, how can I actually get out of this zone or if I do need to get out of this zone uh, to ace and become a better or a good consultant? So I was looking for that. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Rahul Bhai, for your wonderful question. Let me just clarify or let me just start with this. Uh, oh my. So one of my colleagues is actually a AAA graduate uh, and he's an excellent consultant. So it doesn't stop you. Like if you have that analytical background, if you can think critically, if you can, if you have all the facts that's, uh, that are necessary, 
I don't think that the, your triple A background is going to stop you. Another thing is that maybe you don't have any formal business education, right? But we are talking about business consultancy or management consultancy here. So you might need to learn very quickly some of the basic economics or business uh, ideas maybe so that whenever your colleagues or whenever your clients are asking for specific business solutions or management solutions, you, you, you just go there and answer their questions properly. So it does not limit your ability, like your background, your educational background does not limit your chances in any way. Maybe you need to learn a little bit of economics and business in, in order to become a consultant. Could I answer your question, Rahul Bhai? Uh, yes, uh, actually for the last one minute, my electricity went down and I couldn't hear anything, okay. but it's okay. I will listen to the recording later on. If, oh, that's too bad. Yeah, <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Okay. Is there any other questions or should I just go ahead? I think you could just go ahead. Um, again, if everyone ha anyone has any questions, do drop it in the chat box. Thank you. So how to be a consultant. So, so this is a very important saying uh, and interesting saying that if you are a pair of hands, but not a head, you are not a consultant. So we are not workers. We are not employees. Like we are, uh, we take ourselves, we take our huge deal of pride in ourselves that we are the heads. We make the decisions. Most of our skills comes from our strategic thinking. And that's why whenever we are talking about uh, manually, or not manually, but like, usual official work, we talk about like thinking and coming up with solutions. So a lot of our effort goes into our daily for day to day life, in our daily day to day life at a, as a consultant. A, a lot of our daily uh, time or a lot of our time or effort goes into that thinking process. So how do we actually work around the problems and how do we solve the problems that the client comes with, comes with to us? So number one, the steps. So there are usually three steps. So number one is the three steps to solve any problem or to become a consultant. Not, uh, so number one is always begin with the structure. Number two, play with the people, not with the company. Number three, sell the solution. So how does that work? So always begin with the structure as I have demonstrated earlier and emphasized earlier that we have to think, plan, and communicate following a structure. So we maintain, we use various tools like consultants always use Excel, Google Sheet, Google Doc, and any other tool like or Slack or Trello uh, to kind of, um, or Trello to kind of uh, track all the project works and what's happening and to communicate with the teammates because this is very important for us to stay on ahead of the communication that's going on into the team and also we have to keep a check that what's going on here or what do I have to do within this period because most of the time we work with more than two or three projects at a time so if we cannot structure it properly, and if we cannot track it properly, there is a chance that we might lose view of that problem or we might lose view of that project. So that therefore it's very important for us to, before beginning a project, we have to structure the whole project. So if I had time or if I was allowed to share our work with you, like this is a very large group, I could have just shown one of my projects and that would have helped me to explain it, but unfortunately I cannot. Just imagine that we maintain a Google Sheet and we write the timeline, the objectives of the project, the people we are going to interview, the data sources we are going to look into, and the questions that we're going to ask in a single sheet, and we work on that so that the client can see it, so that our internal stakeholder, that means my uh, supervisor can see it, and also my colleague can, colleagues can see it. So we maintain a kind of that kind of structure. So that that's what I meant by structure. And then secondly, playing with the people, but not with the company. So 
Whenever we are working with our internal and external stakeholder, that means our company people and the client, we try to build a meaningful connection. Because at the end of the day, we are trying to solve the problem that the people, the persons are facing from that company. We are not here for, to kind of, uh, we're not here for the long run probably because as we know that we are consultants, most of the contracts are signed between six to, uh, signed for three to six months. So we are not uh, onboarded for a long time, but we want to maintain that relationship. We want to turn something meaningful from it. And that's why we try to build connection that stays, that can be leveraged in the future. As I have mentioned earlier, that we have these connections with the industry experts. So how did we build that connections? By playing this game by building meaningful networks. And then we need to empathize with our internal and external stakeholders. Some people might wonder why do we need to empathize with our clients and internal stakeholders whenever we are talking about consulting. But note that, that empathizing is very important and also it is very important for a consultant to keep a very open mind to understand the client's problem and also the teammate's problem in order to grow together and also there's a very important uh, problem uh, there's a very interesting problem that we often face is that sometimes clients hire us because they have been in the industry or they have been in their particular business for a really long time and that's why this is very difficult for them to identify actually where the problem is happening or actually what are the symptoms of the problems or how to address that and that's why they have hired us so sometimes they don't know what this what are the solutions they need sometimes they assume that so these are the solutions that we want and trust me this is not from their lack of knowledge or experience or anything. It's just because of the fact, because they have been in the business for a long time now and they want someone like you, or they want a consultant who can have a third person's view and suggest them or guide them to make the correct decision. So there, at this point, this become very important to understand what is the solution that they actually need, but to not advocate for the solution that they say that they want. So I know this sounds a little bit complicated, but always remember that you have to empathize with the person, but don't let him or her make the uh, make a make a choice that you know as a consultant based on your evidence based decision making and everything that is not the right choice. So if you want to do all all these three, there's a chance that your relationship with the company or th that your relationship with the client might get affected. So therefore you have to play with the people. And this is something that you learn in the business. And lastly, you have to sell the solution. So no matter how good the solution is or no matter how many hours you have put into making that financial model, um, as many of you might know that it takes usually one week to prepare a standard financial model, but it doesn't, it won't make anything or it won't add any value if you cannot sell the solution to the client or your internal stakeholder first. Because if your boss tells you that it doesn't make any sense and the NPV is negative, so I think there is a problem here, it, it won't make any sense. You have to convince them or you have to advocate to your idea that, okay, so this is the logical flow. This is the methodology that I have followed. And this is something that I have figured out. So that's something that we need to remember that we have to sell the idea by providing data-driven uh, explanations and always provide them with evidence-based strategy. So do we have any other questions at this stage? So it's silent. So I'm going to move forward. So I'm almost at the end of my slide. And 
I have tried to put up some resources that might be helpful for people who want to explore more about consulting or try to understand how do we work or whether they want to explore the industry. So as I have mentioned earlier that there are four core areas where you need to be really good at if you want to be a consultant. So based on that, I tried to suggest some books and some online resources. So first of all, strategic thinking. So, and let me just get to the fact that uh, if you want to build a skill, you have to definitely learn a little bit about it. And books are wonderful ways to learn. And also if you want to practice your learnings, you can go to some online resources and take some tests and probably do your own analysis and then you learn it. You turn your learning to active applications. And therefore I followed this books and online resource approach. So it doesn't mean that if you want to learn strategic thinking, reading these five or six books is going to give you going to get you there because uh, the list keeps growing and growing and there's no end to the list. So these are some of the very basic books or some of the like consider this as some of like the very basic or the very uh, primary level of uh, books and online resources that you need to kind of get to know about the consultancy industry. So first of all, for strategic thinking, you can start with the McKinsey way. It's written by Ethan M. Rezell, a former McKinsey employee. And this is a really good book. And it's a very light, written, light book. So it's like really easier to read and you can just complete it by one month. This is really easy to read. And then there are other books called Good to Great. And then there's the Consulting Bible. And also there's this really handy tool. This is the HBR case, the case studies. So you can probably solve some of the case by your own from that case study book. So that's a really good exercise, by the way. And then you can also, for online resources, you can look into other consultancy firms' cases that they have posted in their website. Like you can look into our website, you can look into McKinsey's website, PwC's website, BCG, or Bain and & Company, and other consultancy firms' websites. And secondly, business writing is extremely important for consultants. And the problem that we face with recent graduates is that academic writing is very different from business writing. So business writing is usually very concise and very crisp. So in, if, if you want to kind of try get that uh, crisp writing in, in a really short time, you need to practice really hard. So there are some books called Element of Style. Uh, style. So this book can be really helpful if you are getting into this area. And then there's an unusual source, which is the Manhattan GMAT Sentence Correction. So this book is very tricky and very difficult to solve. Uh, not very difficult, mild difficult to solve. But this will help you to understand how to minimize the sentence, how to uh, write a sentence using the least amount of words. And that is very handy in consulting or in business writing. And also there are some online resources like the Purdue Online Writing Lab, they call it out. And then there are some courses, business writing courses. So um, uh, there are some universities like University of Michigan, Duke University and uh, Northwestern University. They have some really good, good uh, courses there. And you can probably learn from that. And then for data analysis, so there are lots of data analytics uh, tool right now. There are Tableau R, um, then there's Power BI, and the list goes on and on. But always remember that Excel is the most basic, most simple, yet most useful. So if someone has their basic in Excel, they can probably Excel any other tool in a really short time. So, and also it, this is very important to understand how to visualize the data because we have seen people who are really good at data analysis, but they don't understand the story the data is trying to tell. So there is a very good book that I have recommended. This is called Storytelling with Data. This is uh, about data visualization and how to, you know, how to translate your finding to your client. And that is really helpful in that area. And also there are some courses available on Coursera and lynda.com. lynda.com has really good courses on Excel. And then if you want to explore other languages like R, SQL, or Python, you can go to DataCamp or Kegel, and they have really good business analytics uh, data set. And you can probably go there and practice on the data set. 
And also there's some uh, free tutorials on Excel or on YouTube uh, by Excel is fun. And there's um, um, an expert called Leila Karani who made really good, uh, who makes really good Excel tutorials. So another tip is that if you really want to do a Coursera course, but you don't want to do it on free, you uh, you have to write to them that uh, explaining your situation and why do you need that free. So probably they might give you, considering if you are a student, they might consider to give you a free access to the course for one month or two months, and probably we can do the course for free. free. And then there's communication and visual thinking. So visual thinking is extremely important when we're communicating in a consulting setting or in a business setting. So for, for visual thinking part, I would suggest a book which is called The Back of a Napkin. And that means solving problems and selling ideas with picture. So in my slide, I tried to put a little bit of visual in it so that it aids your understanding. So maybe uh, reading about uh, this kind of uh, visual thinking problems or how to sell your ideas using visually, uh, visually pleasing data and diagrams, this might help you. And also you can explore some tools like Canva, Visual Capitalist, 24 slides to make really good slides. Because there's a saying going on and that too in Bangladesh and also in North American country that, no, North American countries that um, PowerPoint is one of the thing that uh, consultants are really good at. So, and which is true. So if you have to be, if you have to need to learn or want to learn PowerPoint in a really uh, short time, just explore yourself and go there and try to make it as informative but as visually pleasing as possible using these resources. And another thing that I have mentioned, the communication. So in consulting, communication does not only mean that writing reports or making slides, it also means that uh, critical communication with your client or your internal or external stakeholders. So Never Split the Difference is a really wonderful book that talks about the negotiation skills. And as we have seen in recent graduates that there, our universities do not actually teach negotiation pretty well. So maybe uh, reading about it or learning about it from an online forum or tutorial or anything that you can find, or maybe you can practice with your friends, or maybe you can think of yourself in a really difficult negotiating situation and maybe you can learn about it. So, and also I wanted to talk about a picture and uh, uh, an Instagram page, like this is very unusual, but if you really want to start uh, pre start making visually pleasing presentation, but with also a lot of information, you can check this page out. Its name is uh, So You Want To Talk About. So this page talks about really um, pressing issues. It can be political, it can be, um, it can be business related, it can be anything, but they kind of put all the information in a really concise way, but in a really good, uh, visually pleasing way, and uh, they release it from their Instagram page every week. So maybe you can also check it out. So those were basically some of the things that I thought that it might be might come handy to you as you were just as some of, some of you are trying to understand how this whole industry operates and some of you have some kind of experience. So I thought this could be good exposure, a good starting to your journey. So, yep. So I'm done. Uh, so now I would open the floor to you all, whether you have any questions. So I have a question in the chat, but I will wait for other questions and then probably go back to this. Okay, so as there are not any other questions, I'm going to answer Omar Ahmed Bhai's question here. So he wrote, what are the differences usually we see in consulting project among government, private and development sector? How selling project to them have different approach? All right. Okay, so <clears throat> let me answer that first. So consulting projects are, uh, they're not at all different. Like the 
core aspect of consulting is always the same, no matter who the client is. Maybe the selling strategy or the convincing strategy is a little bit different from each one. So for example, whenever we are talking to the government, if I am talking about from, uh, if I'm talking from my experience with uh, working with the government, I can go back to the time when uh, COVID first started back in March, April. And then we, Lightcastle was tasked to write the COVID-19 recovery roadmap for ICT ministry. And at that time for government projects, this is more about advocacy. You have to present the data, you have to gather all the experts that you could think of into a room and you have to provoke conversation, you have to probe them, you have to get the data from them. And at the same time, you have to do some background analysis to see, to look into the existing um, policy guidelines like uh, fifth, five, eighth, five, fifth, five year plan and other Delta plan and other uh, government's policy plans to see whether it conflicts, whether it, it is contradictory to what the experts are saying. So for government projects, it's pretty much advocacy. You use different strategies and you kind of go forward with that. And for private companies, as uh, profit is profit maximization and customer equity, Acquiring the customers are some of their main concerns. Most of the time we can see that, that they want to know about whether the investment strategy is going to work or not. So there's, you need to be very careful with the facts. You need to be very careful with the uh, financial projections that you are making because they are going to rely on that. And for development sector, you need to be, sometimes you need to be very careful about that about that theory of change or the impact that the corporation of the impact the, uh, their, you know, their project is going to make. So selling is kind of, selling is different and also it does not only vary sector to sector, sometimes it varies client to client. So this is a very interesting game to get into. Thank you for the question. So second question is, are data analytics skills are mandatory to enter in consulting or basic Excel will work? Well, Data analytics, I don't see any difference between data analytics and uh, basic Excel, because to me, data analytics is the ability to see data and uh, kind of know what to do with the data. So basic Excel, by basic Excel, do you think that you can do sum and um, multiplication and uh, stuff like that? Please don't consider that as a, as a data analytics skill because data analytics skill, by data analytics skill, we mean that you know the data, you know, okay, so I have this data set, I have to do a pivot table, or I have to sum the data, or I have to take the weighted average, or I cannot take the median, or I can take the mean. So these are some kind of the data analytics skill that we're talking about. So this question is kind of unclear to me. So I will probably come up with a better, I will probably come up with a better answer with that. So we have another question. Okay. All right. So Rafat, are we on time or do we, uh, what do you propose? Um, I think we have a few min more minutes to go. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a few questions in the chat box. Uh, maybe if you can answer them, I think that would be great. Mm -hmm. All right, so I will try to be very quick. I cannot take till 7.35 or 7.30. As we started at 6.36, I will uh, keep talking till 7.36 if that's all right with everyone. And uh, let me check. Okay. Uh, okay, so should we use Power BI or Tableau for data visualization? The most important part here is to understand how to visualize the data or which visualization we will make the most amount of impact. So both of these tools are really good, but for visualization, uh, Tableau is uh, more popularly used all over the world than Power BI. Power BI is more like analytical tool. So I think that answers your first question. Also, should one go for a specific industry or gather knowledge for multiple industries for consultancy? So um, this is something that uh, that's a little bit broad. So whenever you are going for consultancy, you have to have been that mindset that, mm, mm, oh, okay, specific industry. So if 
if we're catering to a specific industry, for example, if uh, someone with an LPG plant hires me to check whether building another LPG uh, plant next to the plant would bring bring him benefit or economic benefit. So I would just look into LPG industry. But if someone is talking to me about how should they kind of think how to uh, how to invest in startups or what should be the investment st strategy for startups in Bangladesh, I should be looking into all the industries that uh, the startups are currently working in. So this also varies case to case. And I think that answers your questions, Amrina. If it doesn't, please let me know. Okay. Mm. How about yes, one? Uh, I'm answering. Uh, oh, hi, I'm you know, right. So do you have any other question or could I answer that? Okay, uh, I'm answering to, to, to buyer Al Mahmoud's question, the presentation on what is started consulting, how should one approach to a potential client without any prior connection with the client and how we benchmark what client can achieve with consultant's help versus without consultant's help. So whenever a client is deciding that he or she is seeking personal uh, professional help, they have already made up their mind that they need a consultant because they have already done their cost benefit analysis. Always uh, trust me on this. So you don't have to benchmark uh, what you have. Well, but I mean, you don't have to sell him that idea that, okay, so you could have, couldn't have done that without my help. So that's not going to be a factor. And first question is, was that, how do you approach a client? So uh, we usually write proposals. The clients usually, um, there are some certain, um, there are certain sources or there are certain, uh, say, there are some sources where the informations are paid posted like uh, some someone wants some consultancy service in that area and we write our proposal we give them a financial proposal also a technical proposal also and then there's a bidding session going on and then after the bidding session if our proposal passes through all of the other competitor we are hired so we don't have to just go there and approach them and tell them that okay give us work so i think that that helped you to, to buy So uh, I'm answering Tanvir Mahatab's question here. What are the uses of the SPSS software for a business consultant? SPSS is good for which aspect of business research? So SPSS is really good for development sector research because most of the development sectors that are operational in Bangladesh, they have this, um, they, some, some of them, not all. I uh, pardon my mistake that I said most of them. Some of them have this provision that they have to store their data in spaces because uh, that is a, a part of their decorum. But uh, in nowadays, learning spaces or I think the basic level of spaces is all right. You don't have to analyze the data using spaces and uh, spaces comes with some other sorts of problems also. But if you just know Excel or if you can just master Excel, that is going to also help you with SPSS because SPSS is only used at the last stage after the analysis is done. And this is used for converting the data set into codes and then storing it at CSV format. Okay. So Tanvi, did that answer your question? Okay, okay. All right. So uh, what time is it? It's almost 7.29. Is there any other questions around the room? Yeah, I think we can wait for five more minutes and then okay. we can close the session if everyone doesn't have any questions. I think so we have one more question um, from Farhan Islam Shihab. If you could kindly answer that. Sorry. So if someone is a good thinker and very much into design thinking and not that much fond of data analysis related stuff, is there an opportunity for him or her to be a consultant? Well, Farhan, that's a really good question. So let me just uh, tell you an anecdote. So, Consultants are expected to be uh, 
see there was a uh, there was a saying going on there's a phrase like uh, idiom like um jack uh master of all jack of none no uh is uh, did i say this right Rafael? what was the saying again okay i think i felt not here so um, i'm so sorry i'm just having technical issues as we can can repeat as a new sorry so, yeah okay so omar is helping me jack of all trade master of none, uh, yeah. Master of none. So, yes yeah yeah so consultants has to be consultants have to be jack of all trade jack of all trade and master of a few so you must know about data analysis you must know about uh, writing reports you must know about we're making really good slides you must be you must have critical thinking ability you must be very empathetic and everything but you can be a specialized or you can be an expert on some of this like if you are a really like if you were into design thinking if you think that you can you are the visual uh, you are the visual thinker of the team you are the chief chief uh, data visualizer in the team you can be a consultant, but you just have to make sure that you know about all the other stuff also. All right. Is that clear? Is that clear, Farhan? Right. So there was another question. I think someone wrote that uh, in their form that uh, what is the opportunity for consultancy industry to grow in Bangladesh? So I really wanted to answer that. Uh, and like I, we think, we don't think because we are consultants, we talk from our evidences and our data. So our data shows that Bangladesh is going to um, going to grow in the next decade. And uh, whenever a country is growing and whenever a country is attracting a huge amount of FDI and um, investments from other sources. So at that time, there's there are going to be many foreign companies and other uh, many foreign businesses entering the country. And whenever they're entering the country, they will be uh, needing services like consultancy to kind of make their investment strategy or make the investment due diligence and other stuff. So as consultancy is all about assisting them or all about guiding them into the right direction, we believe with our data that definitely consultancy is going to go in Bangladesh and there will be lots of other companies mushrooming in the next one decade. So that's what we think. So it's almost 7.34. So is there any other chance or should we wrap up the session? I think we have one last question. I think we can wrap up after that. Uh, it's from Tanvi Mahatab. Okay. How is it possible to become a freelance business consultant? Well, so that is not my area of expertise because I am not a freelance business consultant, but I have, as I have read and as I have heard, I would suggest to kind of, um, I suggest to kind of start with a company and then learn and maybe can kind of identify this on your own because freelancing business consultancy is a very new idea in Bangladesh and that too if you want to do as a freelancer can be really difficult and as in the beginning of the session we we're talking about the credibility, the network presence, the network or the uh, connection with the industry experts. These are the things that you need to do business, that you need to do, uh, that, that you need to do consultancy in Bangladesh. So if you're working as a freelancer, that can be extremely difficult for you. So I think I answered your question, Tanvir. Right. So I have another question. Uh, this is a direct, this was a direct message. So this person asks, is there any institution in Bangladesh where I can learn it? No, as far as I know, there are no institution in Bangladesh, but, uh, well, telling, telling that, uh, just saying that in my mind that no, didn't sit, sound, sound right, because uh, 
I mean, I have learned a little bit of it in my universities when I learned economics, when I learned business management, when I learned communications. So this is an ongoing process. You cannot just go some in North America, people do MBA or M MSBA and uh, they kind of they kind of learn important skills, but they don't have any skill. They don't have any, they don't even have any courses like consulting one on one or how to do consulting in how to learn consulting in 60 days. They don't have it. So I don't think Light Castle is in a position to start teaching people consultancy. One good way would be like we follow this approach. We hire people as training consultant. We try to develop them because consulting is kind of a uh, it's, it's, it's more of a lifestyle. And that's something that you learn by shadowing your uh, supervisor, shadowing your other colleagues, and then you learn it. And that's how we believe that Light Castle is teaching it, it is in, in this uh, Ecoman. So yeah, I think that answers your question because I, I really found it interesting that, uh, is there an institution in Bangladesh or does Light Castle can start it? Yeah, I would definitely ask this to my supervisors. Okay, Rafael, I don't think we have anyone else. Yeah, I think a lot of late joiners are coming in, um, but I think our session is uh, has come to a conclusion. I would like to thank everyone for uh, coming to the session and being attending, attending the session on time. And I would uh, send the uh, key uh, points of discussion and also the Q and A's um, by next week, inshallah. And uh, thank you so much for attending the webinar. Um, if you could kindly press the leave button, I think we can all um, close. Um, Sylvie, do you want to say something as an end note? So as an end note, I would just uh, like to say this one thing that the most important thing one can give another person is their time. And you have been with me for the last one, one hour and you have been very patient and you have asked really important questions and I couldn't be more grateful for that. And thanks a lot guys for guys and girls for joining in and giving me this opportunity to ramble for one hour. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay, I think then we can close the session, Sylvia. Yes. Yeah, okay. Thank you, everyone.